data table one. But before we start talking about the calculations, let's start by taking a little data. This cube has been sitting out for a couple days, so it's not pink, but we can still measure each side. It's pretty cubic, that's two centimeters by two centimeters by two centimeters. So it really is a cube, that's good. If your cube is not exactly a cube, that is just fine. We'll go over those calculations in just a few minutes. First of all, let's put two centimeters here and two centimeters under width. There's a length as well, which was also two centimeters. So length, width, and height for our cube was all two centimeters. This tends to be confusing for some students. It just means the number of sides in a cube, which of course, since we've all probably played with dice or small plastic pieces, we know that cubes have six sides. So to calculate the surface area for cube one, remember there are six sides to the cube and they all have an area of length times height. So if we go two times two, that's four. So six times two times two, or six times four, equals 24 centimeters squared is the surface area for cube one. For the volume, we simply multiply two by two by two. Two times two is four, four times two is eight. So the volume for cube one is eight cubic centimeters. Now let's figure out what the surface area to volume ratio is. So let's take our surface area from in this part of the table and transfer it down to this part of the table. So I'm gonna take the 24 centimeters for surface area I calculated up here and put it down here in this table. For volume, I'm going to take the data from this part of the table, eight centimeters cubed for volume of cube one. When I, when I divide the surface area by the volume, that's 24 divided by eight equals three. So the surface area to volume ratio for cube one is three. Since I have three cubes, I'm going to have three measurements for the distance vinegar diffused. For the small cube, I measured seven millimeters, which is very different than what you're going to get in the lab. Here I have 1.5 centimeters, which is 15 millimeters. That's very different than what you're going to get in the lab, but I'm just showing you how to do the calculations. I'm not going to do the experiment for you. The third cube, I get almost two centimeters, which is 20 millimeters, since there's 10 millimeters in a centimeter. Now I can calculate the diffusion rate. This first group was in vinegar for five minutes. So if I want to calculate millimeters per minute, I take the number of millimeters and divide by the number of minutes. So for instance, for the one centimeter cube, it's seven millimeters divided by five minutes. For the next cube, it's 15 millimeters divided by five minutes. For the biggest cube, it's 20 millimeters divided by five minutes. 
Let me get my calculator out and we'll find out our rate. So when I took seven millimeters divided by five minutes, I got 1.4 millimeters per minute. When I took 15 millimeters for five minutes, I got three millimeters per minute. When I divided 20 millimeters for the large cube divided by five minutes, I got four millimeters per minute. These are going to be very different than your numbers, so don't be alarmed if yours are very different. I'm simply showing you how to do the calculations. I'm not giving you any idea of what your data should look like. I want you to do the lab. Don't use my data. Part B of this data table for diffusion rates is calculated much the same way. Measure the distance for the 10 minute in vinegar group and then divide by 10 minutes. So in this case, it's going to be millimeters, the distance of vinegar diffused in the 10 minute group, divided by 10 minutes. So millimeters divided by 10 minutes for this group. I'll let you come up with your own data here. And that surface area to volume ratio from data table 1, 2, and 3 as well as distance vinegar diffused from data table 4. So you could see it better on camera. I took the graph grid from question 5 and I reprinted it larger so you can see it on camera. Notice I added some labels, distance vinegar diffused versus the surface area to volume ratio. I also labeled the vertical axis and the horizontal axis and remembered to put my units. Now let's put some points on. This is the graph for question five. You'll need to find your largest distance and make your scale go from zero to your largest distance, represent. I plotted surface area to volume ratio here I found that the surface area to volume ratio for that cube was 3. That's from data table 1. So I'm going to look at 7 millimeters. That's the distance the vinegar diffused. And my surface area to volume ratio was 3. So my point will go right here. For the 5 minutes, I will have three points. So I'll put all of those points in blue. Let's plot the data for the two centimeter cube that we calculated in data table one at the very beginning. The surface area to volume ratio for this cube, the two centimeter by two centimeter by two centimeter cube was three. The rate for this cube was also three millimeters per minute. So my surface area to volume ratio was three and my diffusion rate in millimeters per minute was three. So I put a point right there. I will have two more blue points. One for the 1.1 I will have two more points, one for the one by one by one centimeter cube and another for the two and a half by two and a half by two and a half centimeter cube. I want to use diffusion rate, which is the millimeters per minute that we calculated here on data table four, diffusion rate in millimeters per minute. So again, we have to take data from tables one, two, and three to get the surface area, and then data from table four in the second column for diffusion rate in millimeters per minute. Again, you should have six points, three for the five minute group, for the large, medium, and small cube, and three for the 10 minute group, one for the large, medium, and small cube. 